next on AM560, The Answer. Now, from the Signature Bank Studios. If you're looking for the latest news, insight into what it means, and the sharpest opinion, there's only one station in Chicago where you can turn, and it's this one. We're AM560, The Answer. Oh, yeah. Mac Miller, The Spins. Kids love that song. Even though it's, if you listen to the lyrics, it's just not a good song for anybody to be listening to. Music. Good morning, Amy Jacobson here, John Anthony in for Dan Proft. You're wearing the shades, huh? Well, yeah. Getting ready for our 8 o'clock guest? Yeah, look up 8. Which, it's a surprise. I won't say, I'm our not going to, listen, I figured as much. But that's why you're wearing the shades? Yeah. Okay. Oh, my gosh. My you got to find me a pair. Um. All right. Uh, Ronnie Reese, do you know who he is? Uh, Many uh, people think he's running the show at City Hall. Uh, you mean Stacey Gave- Davis Gate? Oh, I mean, um, no, yeah, <laughs> Brandon Johnson's yeah, communication I secretary. I, if you want to get to Brandon Johnson, you have to go through Ronnie Reese. Yeah. Well, gatekeepers. Gate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, Alderman Lopez wrote a letter to the mayor about Ronnie Reese, and he joins us now on our Turnkey Dot Pro Answer Line Uh-oh. to talk about it. And uh, what did Ronnie Reese do? Well, first of all, good morning, Alderman Lopez. How are you? Amy, John, and to all your listeners, good morning to you guys. It's a nice, crisp fall morning here in the city of fall. <laughs> Spring. So still true. spring, yes. And I got shorts on. Yes, he has shorts, which you need to ask and get my approval before you wear your <laughs> shorts. Um, so, Alderman, what, tell us about this letter that you wrote to Brandon Johnson. So, you know, they say nothing on social media ever really goes away, right? right. And a, uh, a tweet from several years ago surfaced from Ronnie Reese. Uh, stating that, you know, he breaks for the Pride Parade, comma, reluctantly. That was the quote. Okay. So if you think about it, so you're reluctantly stopping when you see a Pride Parade. Now, how many many parades or celebrations have we seen crazy people drive through them? Oh, that's right. In Wisconsin, the granny, remember the granny band? And they got... A few of their members were Trinity. violently killed. Oh, so was, yep. do you think he was trying to be funny with this or sinister or violent? You know, he, well, if this is what your idea of a joke is, then we have to question your sense of humor. Um, and especially when you're now in a public role, what I find very interesting is that, and t- so that your listeners know, my letter to the mayor was b- very simple. Fire him. Because this kind of commentary, especially when you're already having strained relationships with uh, the LGBT community, among others, um, you can't say these kind of things or have these things floating out there without any kind of response or appropriate recognition of how off color it is um, and expect people to take you seriously. Yeah. And at first, Ronnie said, well, it's from years ago. You know, I love the parade. You know, yeah. it's a joke. It's it's not homophobic, it's not, you know, dangerous, it's not threatening, blah, 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 blah. How many of us have always heard, it always, it's just a joke? Mm-hmm. Lighten up. Well, did he delete um, the tweet? So they did delete the tweet immediately mm-hmm. um, after it became public uh, uh, by people who were going through his uh, histories, but never acknowledged it, never apologized for it. And when they were called out about it, they went into defense mode and they blamed, you know, the right wing operatives that are out there researching, you know, our past uh, social media posts and this and that. And there were just two words he had to say that were, seemed to be the hardest words for him to say. I'm sorry. And finally, as the newspaper started writing uh, articles on it, journalists like yourself started asking questions about it. Finally, he said, you know what, we, we're sorry. We don't want this to be a distraction. It was wrong at the time. When, when, when did he it's post amazing this? how hard that is for them to say I know. in this yeah. administration. When did he post it, and how old was he when he posted this? Well, he was an adult. Okay. Um, um, it's not like it was a, a, a 13-year-old. Okay. Um, I think the post was 10, 12 years old. Yeah, so, it, I mean, says June 20, it, really, oh, it says June 27th near the Gay Pride Parade time, June 27th, 2010. Oh, 14 years ago. Okay, 14 years. So it, it's been some time. And you know what? We have aldermen who've dressed uh, up in banana suits, you know, and practically blackface 
blackface themselves who apologized. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's not what we got from Ronnie and this team. Is Ronnie going to the parade this year? (laughs) He should be the grand marshal. Well, I wonder if he is. I mean, Mayor Johnson's going to march on it, right? I would imagine so, although he seems to have found a great way to alienate that constituency by shifting around the parade route and shrinking it, increasing it, and doing well, all kinds I, of things to mess with people. And what, what we're hearing, like, rumblings from the FBI and from ABC7 News, they said they're worried about security this year. I mean, I know that they should always worry about security. I've, you know, but do you, are you hearing anything? I don't think there's any exact str- threats. I think... You know, I oftentimes wonder how much of this is just bits of information dropped to cause hysteria by people who are politically motivated, mm-hmm. right? If there's always a threat, if there's always a boogeyman, then there's always a, re- a need for extreme measures to keep people safe and keep politicians amassing more and more power and control. Um, the fact that the constant threat has been used as an excuse to basically turn City Hall into a citadel where you have to go through multiple uh, stanchions, lines, and metal detectors just to go to a city council meeting or to apply for a, a permit is ridiculous. And I think that, you know, we hear and see these things all the time, but how is that a threat uh, at the parade or any of these other unconfirmed things uh, taken seriously? Uh, when you have this administration who openly allows the pro-Hamas activists to infiltrate City Hall, walk up and down freely, and come within striking distance of the only Jewish alderman in the city of Chicago. Okay, who are these right-wing extremists he's keeps talking about? I mean, I, I, say that again? You, you keep hearing the, the mayor talk about right-wing extremists. Oh, who, yeah. Who are Mega they? people. Who are the, who, I mean, who are these people that, that, that has... Uh, that can push back. I mean, it's not enough of them to push back. I mean, I don't get it. <laughs> that The boogeyman that doesn't exist. I think mm. they're related to Santa Claus because he keeps pointing at them, keeps talking about them. <laughs> I know. He blames them for mm. why, you know, Bring Home Chicago failed his referendum. All oh, the, the right-wing extremists and the people, same people who voted for right. Donald Trump. Uh-huh. Yeah, I played um, that sound by Probably I... about 40... It's probably about what forty thousand voters in the city of Chicago. Well, 60, la- last like I checked, that? it was eighty-one thousand registered Republicans in the city of in the city of God, Chicago. It used to be one hundred and ten. Now it's eighty. It, it used to be way more than that. Yeah, eighty-one thousand. That's the last time I checked. Eighty-one thousand registered Republicans that are in the city of the Chicago. The Ascendario brothers, yeah, but, right? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, MAGA, Trump country. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like Trump country to me. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, people walk around with MAGA hats all the time yeah. in the city. It's, it's just <laughs> lovely. All right, speaking of the city, Shot Spotter, where are you on that, and what do you see happening? I know that you know Brandon Johnson doesn't want it because he made a campaign promise that he would get rid of it, which I don't think anybody voted for him because of his stance and his position on Shot Spotter. No, you know, him and the 14 aldermen that voted uh, against ShotSpotter last city council really are going to have some explaining to do over the next few years because uh, I and 33 other of my colleagues voted for the order that requires the mayor to continue using that technology to keep residents safe. We know people don't call 911 anymore, and when they do, it's not reliable where they're sending police. Gunshot te- technology, detection technology, is very reliable within three feet. And the question that many of us asked, myself, Alderman Tabardis, and others is, why are you in such a rush to get rid of this technology? Who are you trying to pay by diverting the money that would have went to keeping people safe? Uh, To which organization are you trying to fund now? Because that's all this is about. And the fact that, you know, every single day there's shootings in the city of Chicago that go unreported. And more specifically, there are victims on the street who aren't going to get a 911 call because people don't do it anymore, this saves lives. And if that $8 million is too much to save someone's life, then go explain that to the people's family. Go explain it to Officer Luis Huesca's family, who had police come and find him faster because of the fact that ShotSpotter alerted the local police department before the first 911 call was made. Oh, wow. And by what, five minutes, wasn't it? Something like that. Or seven minutes. And don't forget Ariana Preston. Yeah. Right. She yeah. was found because of ShotSpotter because nobody called it in. 
or they were sending it, no, they called 911, but to the wrong direction. Oh so goodness. these things, we have real life uh, examples of how it's been beneficial. But when you are so committed to the narrative, when you are so committed to the politics, you know, I heard something yesterday that says the extremes on both sides are like an horse, like a horseshoe that are about to connect in the middle. Yeah. And that's exactly right. So for as much as Brandon Johnson and his socialist communist co- uh, allies like talking about the right wing extremists, they are the left wing extremists and they are about to go out on a date with the other side. <laughs> oh my gosh. Alderman, uh, I got a two part question because I don't know we don't we're running out of time. Um, I, I'll start with the and first. I'm one. wearing my sunglasses too for your next guest. <laughs> okay, thank you. Oh, he knows. he knows. He knows. Yeah. He knows. But I have a I have a two part question. Um, how is the officer that was shot um, by Dexter Reed? How is he doing? And the next question is: Is Chicago really ready for the DNC convention that's coming up? Well, I think that we have to remember that when and when officers respond to a shooting where they where someone's life is lost for even when they are the police are in the right it is still a traumatic situation for the officers uh and i think back to the young officer that shot and killed adam toledo yeah mm-hmm. that that oh. man was messed up in the head yep and he did so much help because it was such a traumatic he shot once and tried to save that young man and then he was vilified yeah. by people trying to make a martyr out of a gang member. That's how most oh, cops feel, by the way. Him. They wanted him on a, they wanted yeah. his head on a swivel. They still, still do. That's Absolutely how most cops feel, still. by the way, when yeah. after uh, an officer involved shooting. They, yeah. the, the feeling of guilt and shame and remorse hits but really hard. Did you ever have to shoot someone? I've never, I've pulled it out three times, had my, well, four times, put, had my finger on the trigger twice. Oh, yeah. and, and look, nobody goes to the work, nobody goes to the job planning to kill someone that day. Right. You're just hoping to get home that day. And if you have to defend yourself, it's still very traumatic. And we don't do as good a job providing the support, not only to the impacted officers, but the officers on the periphery who have to also witness that. Because don't forget, Dexter Reed shot an officer. almost. That's what I mean. How was well, that officer 11 doing? times. 11, everyone's into numbers. Like, you know, um, Jason Van Dyke so, shot 16 times. And, well, that... He, Punk shot at a cop 11 rounds. So FOP, other organizations are trying their best to do uh, to help him and keep him, keep him in his spirits and recovery up. But I think that when you ask about the DNC, is Chicago prepared? No. Mm. I think we're spending too much time um, trying to conserve money and resources um, for whatever reason that we are – Focusing on training that's not going to necessarily be automatically beneficial. You have politicians like the socialist Latinos who are openly encouraging people to to basically burn the city to the ground, to organize protests without permits so we have no idea what's going to pop up, and to give a pathway for all of those secretly funded individuals to return to our city like they did in 2020. And you're going to have a mayor who's going to be standing with the protesters saying, Leave them, all, leave them alone, y'all. This is their their freaking city, too. That's why I'm not going. Yeah. Direct quote. That's what he's going to say. That's why I'm so, not going. Is that a direct quote? or? That's that's my Your version future direct it. quote okay. because I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen. Yeah. And after all of that happens, you know, we just saw this week, you know, from a political standpoint, they already are going to nominate Biden and Harris before they even get here. That's so why are we do, why are we putting ourselves through this then? Well, Pritzker wants this, and I can't wait to find out how much money he personally donated to get the DNC here to Chicago, because that's the last thing we need right now. And if we have a hot summer, boof, it's gonna be blowing well, up around here. I I believe that you know all of this was done because in the event that Joe Biden falls off the tarmac or something happens, um, <laughs> Pritzker wants to make sure that in his own home court he could jump and ascend to be the nomination if Biden can't make Ugh. it. I firmly believe that. Yeah. Why else would you spend all this money to make sure it's here in a city that, you know, is barely functioning uh, unless you were prepared for the final trip down the stairs? Hey, hey Alderman, if you see Alderman, Alderwoman um, Tavares, tell her I said check her email. I sent her an email. I want to have her on my show. Okay. She's been a she's been a pro police sponsor ever since her and I served together in the General Assembly. Okay. So she's, she's the real deal. 
All right, Alderman Ray Lopez, 15th Ward. Oh, another real quick question, sorry. <laughs> um, how's Gage Park? Are the migrants completely out of there and is back open for business, you know, to serve the taxpayers who fund the place? The taxpayers have their park district back, have yes. their programs back. Yes. Um, everything is cleaned up and ready to go. Right. Um, but don't uh, be surprised if we wind up in the same situation again because uh, there's no real plan once the buses start arriving again, and the city of Chicago is planning for a thousand migrants a week. The closer we get to the DNC, what? so okay. Wow. Oh, oh, gee, I really hope that they set up camp right in front of the you know 19th district and all the police districts in the city of Chicago. Or, Chicago. or in a socialist ward for once, because you know, they want them so bad, let them have them. Yeah, I, we'll send them straight there. Either all right, home. Alderman Lopez, always a pleasure. Uh, God bless, and we'll Can't talk to you again your soon. Your next guest. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Stay tuned. Surprise okay, guest. Thank you. And Alderman Lopez joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. Hear about the big stories of the day, then talk about them right here on Chicago's Morning Answer on AM 560. The answer. When the storms hit Chicagoland this spring and your home or business has water damage, ProTech Restoration is ready 24 7. The certified team at ProTech Restoration will be there quickly and work directly with your insurance. But even in between the storms,